trained counterterrorism expert. What is the best piece of advice that you can give to Americans during this time? Um, the best, the best piece of advice, and it, and it's really at this point in time, kind of trite because it has been turned trite, um, is that you absolutely can't live in fear, and you need to conduct your 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 life in the way that you want to conduct it, um, not in the way that someone else would like to impose uh, restrictions on it. And um, I think that if I, if we had ever had the, the, the national courage to, to build a, a strategy um, that, that was based on the, the principles of our founding fathers um, and, and the Constitution, I think we would be way farther ahead in the game on the war on terror than, than we are. Um, but our strategy has dissolved into trying to defend an infinite number of single units in time and it's, it's, it's simply impossible, and it's too easy to manipulate. Um, and what's kind of funny is, is, is you look at U.S. strategy and, and the things that we're trying to do um, to our enemies. You know, we talk about things like effects-based operations. Well, an effects-based operation is you're trying, you're, it's not about killing the enemy, it's about, it's about affecting his ability to conduct operations the way he wants to. Um, so if you call the commanding general of the opposing army every time he starts his car and tell him that he just starts and started his car, that's going to really wear thin on that guy because he's going to know that you know everything about what he's doing. Well, similarly, terrorism is an effects-based operation, and, and and what they are, they, they simply can't defeat us militarily. So they're trying to affect the way we use our force, the way we use our political willpower. Um, and at any turn when you allow that effect to occur, you are, you're not necessarily handing them a victory, but what you are doing is, is you are enabling them to continue uh, meeting their organizational um, imperatives. I mean, <clears throat> one of the things that we like to do as Americans is, is to uh, you know, build an enemy that is, that is 10 feet tall. Well, the fact of the matter is, is those guys still have to recruit they still have to fund their operations, and in order to do those two things, they need to be able to show successes. So <clears throat> when you bomb Kobar Towers and the military entirely leaves that region of, of Arabia and builds a $400 million base in the central of the country, those recruiters can go back to their money people and say, look, you know, we got them off of the Saudi Arabian Peninsula with a million more dollars, we would have been able to get them all the way out. When you bomb the coal and the U.S. Navy never goes into Yemen again, those guys are sitting there going, look, if we just would have had two more guys, two more of your sons, you know, we could have gotten them entirely out of the region. So you have to stop at every turn feeding them um, those successes.